All right, what's up guys? Ah, I gotta learn how to talk to the camera again. What's up guys? I'm back again with another Sony video. This time it's about HLG3. Before we get into that though, do y'all like this, uh, this Satan's waiting room vibe? <laughs> uh, I'm in, uh, I'm in waiting to get a anal rectomy. <laughs> All right, you'll have to excuse my, uh, my bed head. I just woke up five minutes ago. <laughs> I really need a script when I make these. I always go off in these long rants and then I forget what the title of the video was about. Uh, I wanted to make a video about Sony's HLG3 profile and really just my custom settings on how I put contrast and saturation back into it. Um, I'm coming from a background of like someone who's had 8-bit cameras, so I don't really want to color grade too much. You know, I've looked into it and I've tried, but my image always ends up breaking, so now the mindset that I've had is to always try and get everything correct in camera or as much as I can. That way in post, I barely have to do anything. So these settings are basically, like I mentioned, gonna put contrast and saturation back in. I'm gonna show you the menus and why I chose, um, what it is, why I chose that, and that's really it. We'll just keep this one nice and simple. All right, so starting with why you'd probably wanna use HLG3 or any PP profiles, it's gonna start with dynamic range. So. To give an example, PP10 right now is on HLG3. When I switch it to off and it goes back to creative style, you're gonna see the, the highlights blow out, but it's still at the same ISO level. So it's gonna take a lot more to blow out the highlights in PP10 or Cine4 or whatever. So in this case, I'm just gonna to stick to HLG3, but that's probably why I would use it is so that if I'm outside, uh, I, I won't easily blow out the highlights. You know, you're gonna get more information in those highlights. So that's that one. Um, now, these are the settings that I have for PP10, uh, starting with black level, that's that's like the contrast, uh, like that might, is black point is basically like contrast I want to say, I'm, that might be wrong, the wrong reference to use, but to help me understand I usually just say it's like contrast. So uh, the pluses are going to be lighter and the minuses are going to be darker. You could technically leave it at negative 15, again just to get an image that looks already good. But sometimes I don't want to use, I, I don't want to color the clip too dark like that. So if you do leave it like that, it's already baked in, so you're kind of, you're hosed. So I'd rather just leave it at zero, and then I can just add in my own contrast later. Uh, gamma's going to be HLG3, and then black gamma, this one doesn't apply to HLG. This applies whenever you use like Cine4 or a different uh, picture profile, and then black level won't matter, so it, it's kind of flipped. Uh, knee is the compression of the highlights, so I always change it to manual and then go to 105%. That way it doesn't compress the highlights. Uh, to give you an example though of the percent here, if you change it to like let's say the lowest, it'll compress the highlights. I think if I change it you can kind of see, no not really, but it'll basically compress the highlights for you. But again, that's baked in, so I'd rather just for highlight reason, uh, for highlight purposes, just leave it at 105, and then I'll pull those back manually in post. So knee, I just leave it at 105, and then slope at zero. Uh, color mode, I like to leave it at 709. BT 2020 is more for like HDR, so I find that the uh, skin tones look a little bit better on 709. But again, that's just my opinion. Um, yours, yours might not be the same. Saturation, I put it at plus 10. Technically, I could go higher, but plus 10 seems to be like the the minimum I would go if I'm still gonna add a LUT because sometimes LUTs come really saturated and if you already saturate this a lot then your image for the LUT is gonna look bad you're gonna have to really dial down the intensity so I think 10 plus is a safe bet that way you can still add a LUT that has a lot of saturation in it later color phase is like skin tones I don't really have anyone to show this example to right now but uh, I've played with this I found that negative six looks pretty good on brown skin tones. Uh, again, that's subjective. That's something that if you make these changes, it'll show you real time. And if you pointed the camera at somebody's face, you can test to see what looks better. Just to me, negative six for color phase just looks better for skin tones. Same thing with saturation. Like if you did the, what I uh, told you earlier, you just bring it down all the way to the negative, and then you you go back and forth, you can kind of play with it and see like where you want to be at. So again, to me, plus 10 was pretty good. Uh, color depth, this is how dark you want each color to be. So R is for red. I don't have anything red in the image, but let's say blue. Um, I leave it at zero, but it's the same concept. If you go all the way at the bottom, 
you can see what it does. So you'll notice the blue is really dark and contrasty on plus seven, and it's more like a scion on negative seven. I leave these alone um, unless, you know, because more I do more run and gun style. If you have a planned shot and you want the colors to look a certain way, you can definitely go in here and mess with that. Again, that's color depth. You can basically change all these as red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow. You can change all those how you want if you want them to look darker or lighter. So um, that's what that does, and I just leave it alone. Detail is going to be sharpness. I feel like sometimes if I leave it at zero, if you use 4K, the image is too sharp. So again, that could look, sometimes in video or in film, too sharp doesn't look good. So I just put it at negative four. And most times I don't need to add any more sharpness in post. It just looks good the way it is. So that's what I leave it as. And that's basically it. So again, that's my HLG3 uh, uh, profile. And like what you're seeing right now on the uh, on the screen, that's... Uh, that's how that's how I like it. You know, if you if I go back here to let's go to PP9. I don't have anything there. And uh, let me see. And I just put change this to like HLG3. Initially, it looks really like uh, dead. You know, it's um, it's not as bad as S Log2, but it just looks. You still have to do some work to that for sure. Whereas if I change it back to the way I had it, a lot of that saturation and a lot of contrast comes back in. And like I said earlier in the video, I don't have to do that much in post. So that's what all these mean. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Because again, when I first looked at this, I was like, what the heck does black level, gamma, knee, what does all this mean? And it took a while to find someone to explain that, like what each, all of this does. So um, again, the black gamma doesn't apply to HLG3, black level does. And it's to me, it's like contrast. Uh, knee is how you want to uh, compress the highlights color mode. You can play with that again. Some people like BT 2020. I like 709 um, Saturation again play with that to see what looks better for you color phase That's definitely one you do that that don't let anybody tell you what to set that as just do it to how you like it Point it at somebody's face and see what looks better and then color depth um, Another one if you're gonna like planning a film or you know, it's gonna be controlled shots You can change that to see what how the colors are gonna be but for me, I do a lot of running guns, so I just leave them all at zero. And that's it. That was how I have my HLG3 profile. Um, i show you an example here. That's how I looked out of camera, and it was really hard to convey in the screen, but I, this is the image. I barely had to do anything to it. I maybe color, uh, I maybe like fixed the exposure a little bit, but that was it. I just added a LUT after that, and I was good to go. So again, the, the reason you would want to do this is because of the dynamic range, and I definitely think it's worth it. Especially if you don't know how to color grade, just fix these settings, and then boom, you get the added benefit out of your a7 III or any a7 camera that has picture profiles. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed that, and if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Bye-bye.